Welcome to this video overview of working with exemptions and exemption certificates in SureTax. Here on the SureTax dashboard, you can add customers using the Add button in the upper right corner, as discussed in our customers video. But for this tutorial, we're going to access all customer related functions using the menu. Under Configuration, I'll click Customers. Here we can see the full list of customers, which can be grouped according to customer name, customer number, or status. I'll choose customer name to show you how that looks. You can see that the customers are grouped by name in alphabetical order, with A through D at the top. I'll click a customer with no current certificates or exemptions and we can walk through how those are added. This customer is a store in Austin, Texas called Amelia's. Clicking it opens the Edit a Customer screen where we can update most of the previously entered information for this customer. But right now we're interested in the options available at the bottom of this dialog. The first option is to add an exemption certificate for this customer. In the dialog to add an exemption certificate, we can see that the customer number and certificate ID are both pre-populated. But the certificate ID has an edit button, so I can edit that if I choose. I'm going to start however with the information that doesn't already exist, and enter the state for this certificate. I can start entering the first few letters of the state, and the drop-down will narrow to a short list of possible choices. Next is Tax Authority. The next drop-down is for exempt reason. I'll go ahead and select federal government for this example. I can then change the defaults for effective date and end date if I choose. The default effective date is today. I'll leave those values as they are, and go on to the optional fields. For certificate number I can choose from a drop-down list of categories. I'll leave the number field blank for now. I can then enter a certificate description if I choose. And then any notes I may have for this certificate. If you just want this certificate for one invoice only, you can add an invoice number to make this a single-use certificate. And you can set the status. Is this certificate active, inactive, retired, or revoked? I'll leave it as active for now. The status defaults to today's date. If you have a streamlined sales tax ID, you could enter that here as well. And then you'd select the type of business for the streamlined sales tax. I'll select other so that I can show you how to enter a type of business not listed. Selecting other displays an additional field where you can enter that type of business. Let's say University Bookstore. At this point I could click save and close the dialog, but in this case I want to add an exemption. So let's click that. This opens an additional section where I can enter information for that exemption. An exemption ID is pre-generated for me, and again, I can edit this if I'd like. I can choose to base the exemption on state or tax authority or on geocode, and whether to include all authorities or not. I'll leave those as they are. Clicking Tax Exemption Code opens another drop-down for me, where I can choose one or more exemption codes to apply. So let's say I select state and local taxes as both being exempt. Both are added to the Tax Exemption Code field. But actually, I didn't mean to select local taxes exempt, so let's remove that. Next I can enter a trans type code or a SKU. Using the drop-down, I'll start entering the trans type code and see if it comes up in the list. Yes, there it is. General sales. Finally, I can add a reason for this exemption if I wish. Then I can click save to finish adding the certificate. I get a confirmation message at the top of the screen telling me that the certificate was added. Scrolling down, I can see the information for that exemption certificate. Here you can review the information already entered, and click save if you're finished. But now let's try adding an exemption without an associated certificate. We are again presented with a dialog containing pre-populated customer number and exemption ID, the latter of which I can edit if needed. This time however, Let's try assigning the exemption using the geocode. I'm not sure what that code is, so I'll look it up. There are two ways to look this code up, either by filtering down using state, county, city, and district, or just searching by entering the location in the search box. I'll try that. 
My location is Austin, Texas, so let's enter Austin. The drop down filters by all available Austins, so I can clarify which one I wanted. And then click search to find the geocode. There's the one I'm looking for. Having found my geocode, I click save and go back to return to the exemption. And here, I'll select my transaction type code. Then my tax exemption code. Then I could change effective date and end date, but I will leave them as they are for now. Also, as before, I can enter my exempt reason and what the exemption is used for in these optional fields. For the source field and the source field value, you'll see that if I expand the drop down, there are several parameters. And then there is UDF, which means user defined field. Selecting any of these will provide you with an additional field in which you can enter the value for that source field. So for example, I'll select invoice number. Then for source field value, I can enter that invoice number. So what we're doing here is setting the conditions for a rule, for when an exemption is applied for this location. When you send this through the system, this number will be in the parameter field for invoice number. This tells the system that when the invoice number field matches this value, under this transaction type code, it should exempt state taxes during the date range between the effective date and the end date, as specified here. Now let's go ahead and click save. After reviewing what I've entered I'll click save again to save all of the information here. These exemptions can be edited after the fact by editing the customer, but only the end date and the optional fields are available to be edited. Also on this page, we can view the history of exemptions and exemption certificates that have been added, edited, or deleted. After clicking revision history, I can choose which one I'd like to view the history of. I'll say customer exemptions. So here we can see a grid of past revisions, including information such as the action, the date, the exemption ID, the client number, and so on. To return to the customer screen, I'll click customers from the breadcrumbs at the top. And that brings us to the end of this video, so I'll click the Walters Clue or logo at the top of the screen to return to the dashboard. I hope that this video has familiarized you with the various ways of working with exemptions and exemption certificates. As with many features in SureTax, there are multiple ways of doing this so you can experiment and determine what works best for you. Thanks for watching our video on exemptions and exemption certificates in SureTax.